Italy, the country that lit my passion for travel on fire. I decided that since I just filmed a new series on Italy that all of you will see later this year, that I would post the full length movie from the first trip back to Italy after the pandemic. I hope you enjoyed this adventure and subscribe so you don't miss the latest adventure from the Italian Dolomites and Venice. thing just happened back there so I was filming some lady thought that I was filming her and made a big deal about it threatening to call the policia on me so the excitement of this trip did not last for long I should have known that whenever it is raining in Phoenix when I leave it is gonna be a bad day the flight up to Denver was not bad I had a window seat and nobody sitting in my row, but I had a tight connection and of course the currency exchange was closed. The flight to Chicago was nice with a complimentary first class upgrade. Well, this is when things turned for the worse. You see that big thunderstorm cloud out there? Yeah, it's right over the airport. We ended up circling for over an hour. United has waited for passengers before when there are delays for outbound international flights. If they had waited just another 30 seconds, I would have made my connection. So I had to switch airlines, which will lead to another issue, but on to Germany. Well, we're in Germany right now. And one thing that I always enjoy about these Latanza lounges is the fact that there's showers here. So that was a very uncomfortable flight to get some work done um but yeah i'm tired i've got one more flight to make to naples here and uh yeah i can i just can't describe how wonderful it is to be able to at least get a hot shower after you land i also got to enjoy some sweet potato gnocchi before hopping on my final flight to napoli hey everybody i know i've been tr promising you guys this trip for years but it finally happened welcome back to napoli It is good to be back in Napoli. I enjoyed paying a visit to my first European castle and a couple of other landmarks. Now this particular trip has not gone off well. Missed my connection in Chicago because of storms. So I had to take a different flight on a different airline. They lost my bags. It's been 24 hours, still no bags. But according to the website, they're supposed to fly those bags in, but there's an air traffic controller strike going on right now. So I don't know when I'm gonna get them. And this is when the incident occurred. Right after I turned off my camera, the irate woman showed up. So after my little run-in with that local who was quite upset that she thought I was photographing her, which I don't see how because the camera was pointing at me, um, I decided I better just simmer down a little bit on the photography. So I did, uh, you know, find a couple boats down in the um, Bay of Naples that I thought looked kind of interesting. Um, had some dinner, had a really great blue cheese pizza. Never had that before. It's pretty good, but. Um, Decided it might be a good idea to do a little quick research here. Um, so here we go. Sh so shooting and... I'm not going to bore you with all the legal stuff that I was reviewing, but it seems that everybody wants money. Now, about my luggage. I just checked the uh, airport and uh, they have no clue where my luggage is. I think it's time to head to Rome. The week is over, it's time to have some fun, and we're gonna to go to Rome to photograph the Colosseum. That's right, we are heading back to Rome. My last trip to Rome was back in 2018 when I first started this channel. Something I remember from my last visit to the Eternal City is Betty Candelari performing in front of the Pantheon. Just listen to her heavenly voice. <laughs>
Now, I'm no stranger to traveling, and in particular, to the train station at Piazza Garibaldi here in Napoli. I've got all of my gear locked and secure to keep prying hands out of my stuff. I'm taking a cab from the hotel to the train station just to be safe with my luggage. Something that is really nice about the European train system is how frequently the trains run. I've opted for first class. You tend to have less issues with petty theft when you're in first class. However, watch this guy walk past me. This is the third time he has walked the length of the train looking at every seat. He will grab anything left unattended. Aside from that, the one hour and 10 minute ride treated me to the beautiful Italian countryside and made me wish that I had my Jeep here. Once in Rome, getting around is easy. The subway ticket machines can display English and with only two lines, it is hard to get lost. This is August and the temps are sweltering. Fortunately, the subway cars are air conditioned. Small elevator. It is hot here. Well, that was a very interesting train trip. We actually had a guy who was walking the constant time, every time, constantly looking at everything with a little satchel on the side. In other words, he's looking for stuff to steal. So of course, make sure you keep an eye on all of your belongings, even if you're in uh, first class. So anyhow guys, we're back here, or we're here at the hotel. And uh, it's just a small, neat little boutique hotel, but uh, definitely affordable and we're actually very close to the Vatican. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drink plenty of water because it is hot here. I'm actually gonna jump in the shower and cool off. And then um, we're about three hours from sunset right now, so we're gonna head off to the Roman Colosseum and do some evening panos with that beautiful structure as our subject. After a little rest, it is time to get back in that small elevator and the subway. Rome is a beautiful city. After being in Napoli for the last week, the more quieter streets of Rome is a very welcome change. This is not to say that you will not see a little trash, but not as bad as Naples. As you can see behind me is the Colosseum, built, I believe, around 70 AD. That makes it almost 2,000 years old. What we're going to do is we're going to circle around the Colosseum and try and find a good vantage point for sunset. We have maybe two hours, if, to find our spot. Now, we're on the northwest corner right now, and there is some construction behind us, and, or between us and the Colosseum, but I don't want to get in there. So we're going to go ahead and walk around and see what we can find. This is the largest amphitheater ever built. It served as the ancient home of the gladiators. With an estimated capacity of up to 80,000 spectators, it could hold more people than the largest baseball stadiums in the United States. It was used for entertainment purposes for several hundred years. This is actually the first time I've been able to do this, to take the time to walk around the Colosseum I usually have to rush when I'm in here, but this also makes me just look forward to when I can retire and enjoy doing this at a much slower and more enjoyable pace. Well, here on the southeast corner, looking into the other side of the Coliseum, I can see where there's some uh, restoration work, lots of scaffolding. So I don't know what the shot's gonna look like tonight. Now I'm still looking around for a good vantage point to try and photograph. There is up here a road with possibly a sidewalk I could go on. I'm gonna continue on to the south and see if we had a better angle. Everywhere there is history. The Arch of Constantine, dedicated on July 15th, 315 AD, to commemorate Emperor Constantine the Great and his victory over Max Antinius. Well, unfortunately, the vantage point that I was hoping for is actually gated 
here at the Rome, Roman Forum. So we're gonna have to find a, maybe a less dramatic location. So we'll continue to finish this walk around, see what we can find. Well, I'm pretty much back to our original location here. This entire area is surrounded by fencing. There's construction down there. This is just not turning out to be a really good evening to photograph the Colosseum. Uh, but it's what we got to work with. So you, you know, don't know when you're gonna be, okay, I know I'll be back here in uh, May. And hopefully that means that I'll be able to get a better, um, better image. But for right now, I'm gonna try and take advantage of the golden light hitting the side of the Colosseum here and see if I can come up with a composition. Well, if we had clouds in the sky to capture the color of the sun, I'd be able to uh, keep the camera a little bit elevated and hide the construction below. This is just not working from here. Sometimes you have to keep looking for just the right place to set up your camera. So I think I found probably the best location. We're actually gonna be shooting from the ground tonight. Now, I'm gonna to have to take several images watching everybody to make sure people are moving around. That way in Photoshop, when I combine the images together, I can clone out the people and not have to worry about things like model releases for stock photography agencies. I am opting for a very low angle. I'm gonna try and accentuate the height of the Colosseum by setting my tripod low to the ground. Well, like I said, I'm going to have to take several images because of the people who are kind of moving around in the frame right now, which is okay. Um, just have to keep it on it and make sure that I take in, watch the people aren't moving and take more images when they do move. One down thing right now is that the shadow is starting to, the shadows are starting to creep across the Colosseum. So it's uh, from right now, sunset wise, these may not be the best images. We may have to try this again when the lights come on. The processing of these images takes a little bit of time. In my next episode, I will show you how I did it. In the meantime, enjoy. So I'm just going to hang around here at the Coliseum and hope they turn the lights on during the blue hour. I still think this is probably the best image given the circumstances of all the construction um, and possibly a, you know, get an image that's very close to the ground. So we'll see what happens. Got to try and do it in a way that I'm not going to have a lot of people in the image. Well everybody, the blue hour is here and the lights are turning on. Let's see what we can capture tonight. All these people moving around proved to be a challenge, but the technique that I'll share with you on my September 26th episode will shed some light on how I was able to get these images in a crowded place. Alright everybody, welcome to Trevi Fountain. This is one of the most popular destinations in Rome. The fountain is built at the end of a 14 mile long Roman aqueduct that was constructed in 19 BC. The current fountain was dedicated in 1762 by Pope Clement VIII. So this photo shoot didn't quite go as I planned. I had planned on putting my tripod uh, down close to the fountain and doing a long exposure panorama. But 
Not only is there a lot of people here, when I pulled out my tripod on the edge of the fountain, you know, still high up, the uh, policia started blowing their whistles at me. Apparently, you can't use a tripod out here. So, this is what I had to do. Because I had my L bracket on my camera, there is actually a concrete pillar with a flat top to it in front of the fountain. That's what I used to get this pano. This image actually turned out better than I planned. However, if you look carefully, there is a little bit of warping in the upper right. Thanks to the pillar that my camera was on, I was able to do a 2.5 second exposure for each frame in the pano, which allowed me to capture that silky look in the flowing water. So the local legend here is this, is that if you throw a coin over your shoulder, you'll return to the eternal city. If you throw two coins over, you'll return and fall in love. And if you throw in three coins, you'll return, fall in love, and get married. Well, last time I was here, I threw a coin over my shoulder. I'm back. I took many panos this evening, but only a few turned out. I also got some detailed images of the fountain to add to my portfolio. Today, we're going to walk the streets, sample the food, and photograph a small enclave of Rome known as Trastevere. This morning, I'm out and about exploring the area close to the walls of the Vatican. I am in search of breakfast. In Italy, do not underestimate the importance of a good cappuccino in the morning. I found a little street-side cafe called Clementina on the corner of Via Germanico and Via Ottaviano. Starting off a day of exploring with a good breakfast makes a huge difference in your energy throughout the day. One convenient thing about Rome is that you can call up an Uber. I like this option because I don't have to worry about taxi drivers trying to overcharge me for a ride. Welcome to Piazza de Santa Maria. Hey everybody, as you can see the sun is out, which means this is not my normal time for photography. I'm in the Trasaveri area here in Rome, and this is a little enclave of Rome that I looked at three years ago when I was last year, but just didn't have time to visit. So, since I really can't do any dramatic photography because the sun's overhead, this is a good time to practice a little street photography. And also, of course, explore this area. My backpack is a lot lighter because I do not have my tripod with me right now because, again, this is street photography. We don't need to carry it. Um, and also, there's a church behind me. We may get to go inside it. We'll see. But we're just going to enjoy this area, explore a little bit, and maybe sample a little bit of the treats. So when it comes to looking out for things to photograph here, of course we have to watch about things like this up here, which would be artwork and you need an artist release. But the textures of these very old walls is something that you can sell as a background images and that gives graphic artists opportunities to add to it. So we're gonna go ahead and capture some. Now normally I don't enjoy uh, much street art, particularly it's just plain outright graffiti. Um, you know, it just looks uh, really like gang related stuff, but whoever did this one did a really good job. This example of street art is very well done, right down to the detail and the emotion in her eyes. I also found a few other interesting pieces of street art while I was walking around.
Well, it's always in this part of the world. Uh, graffiti is everywhere, and that does make it a bit of a challenge for some of the more beautiful architecture. And also the very close streets also make for a little bit of a challenge as well because you just can't get a good angle Whew, and the heat. I don't know if you guys can see it. I have sweat running down my forehead right now. It is hot this time of the year here. So soon, I, well, I found a uh, Kel Cafe that has misters. Guess where I'm having lunch today? Now, something that I am practicing here is my uh, take three rule. Now, what I mean by the take three rule is that, you know, you just, you just don't know when you're going to be whatever part of the world you happen to be in. So you want to make sure that when you take an image, it turns out. One thing I've had a problem with in the past is I'd snap a photo and the composition would be terrible. Um, there may be, uh, well, basically blur. So what I do is for each uh, subject that I photograph, I capture three images of it and I let my uh, autofocus refocus each time. That way I have at least three chances of getting it right. And in the world of digital photography, you can afford to do that. One thing is when you're out here, especially in this relentless heat, make sure you got plenty of water. Wow. I mean, the humidity is amazing out here right now. So you do dehydrate fast. Time for some lunch. I'm going to be enjoying a meal at La Condica. Very kindly enough, the, uh, the uh, maitre d' seated me right in front of the fan where I wanted to be. Also for the Americans in the audience, when you ask for water, ask for still water. Otherwise you get carbonated water. So remember, ask for still. I'll be sampling the Nocti a la Sorrentina. Needless to say, it is as good as it looks. That's good. That's real good. One of the things I love about Europe are the churches. The Baroque style is just something that you will not see in the United States. The image that I love to get inside of a church is when beams of sunlight come through the windows. Even if this is not your house of worship, leave a little thank you. Also, try to be respectful. There are people here to practice their faith. Something that I was grateful for with my new camera is the silent shutter mode. My old camera, my 7D, made noise and there's no way I would have taken it inside of a church to photograph. But with the silent shutter mode on, this thing is perfectly silent and uh, you can maintain a level of dignity while you're inside photographing. We are about to do a photo shoot at the Vatican. Before we get there, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. On this channel, I take you through all the adventures that I have capturing my photographs. Sometimes I'm in a famous destination and other times in some very remote places. Also check out patreon.com forward slash EWJ for my bonus content and videos. Welcome to Rome in the summer. It is hot. It is very hot. And as you can see from the imprint of my backpack on my shirt from the sweat, 
I now understand why ancient Romans wore togas. I am in Rome for a weekend away from work. Rome is a much quieter place than Napoli, and I just woke up from a nap late. I am rushing over to the Vatican to capture some evening photographs. The Vatican, like San Marino, is a country within a country at 121 acres and a population of about 825. It is the smallest country in the world and completely surrounded by Italy. I first visited the Vatican in 2010 and was able to capture these images from inside the St. Peter's Basilica. The current basilica was completed in 1626. Under the high altar is the tomb of St. Peter. The church is built in the Renaissance style. The interior is simply breathtaking. On my second trip to Rome, St. Peter's Basilica was my focus. It was also featured in one of my first episodes on this channel. I spent two nights on this bridge spanning the Tiber River trying to capture this view. I had some success. Fast forward three years later, and I am back. Let's just be real. You don't get construction like this in America. So I believe we're going around the back end of the Pope's personal fortress. Not that they use that anymore or anything, but anyhow, I was going to uh, kind of come out a little bit earlier and do some uh, street photography out there, except when I put my equipment on the chargers, I took a nap, did set an alarm and really overslept. Uh, it's okay though because my gosh the sunburn I picked up from earlier today probably best they stayed indoors here for the last few hours so anyhow we're heading about uh, trying to make our way to uh, Vatican City here I think we're just about there I guess they still exist here old real technology despite being hungry I pass by the many outdoor establishments that smell amazing. This is the Facetta de Borgo, built in 1277. It is 2,600 feet long. This has served as a passage from the Apostolic Palaces to the fortress of Castle Sant'Angelo, where Pope Clement VII took refuge during the sack of Rome in 1527. This is not my first stroll down Via della Conciliazione. I also recommend it in the evenings. It gives a very powerful impression of St. Peter's Basilica. The Basilica is impressive in its size. We got some really neat dramatic light hanging, hitting it right now. The other cool thing is we're about to leave the country of Italy and enter another country called Vatican City. Interesting enough, I think we're now crossing the border. Just like that. So up there, traditionally would be the Pope's apartment, but I believe the current Pope has opted not for the opulence of the uh, papal apartment that is actually residing somewhere else in Vatican City in a much more humble place, which is, uh, I guess, part of the, um, I don't know what you call it, the order that he's a member of to be very humble and to live in poverty. So instead of having that palace, I think he's in a very, like, one or two room apartment right now, something like that. Anyhow, okay, a few challenges here. That obelisk is kind of in the way. So if it's gonna be real hard for me to shoot the front of the um, basilica dead on because of that obelisk. I could go back, but of course that means I get more people and I could go in front, which means I'm gonna lose, well, this immensely beautiful structure that's all around St. Peter's Square. So a tough decision, but the light is fading. Now also if I get too close, I lose the dome. 
All right, let's go back here to the fence by the border. We're gonna set up the tripod and see what it looks like. So right now I'm kind of opting to be off to the side so I can get the full front of the basilica here in this panorama. But my very last visit here, which is three years ago, I did make it here to St. Peter's Square at night and got in front of the obelisk. And here are what those images look like. So something that's going to be a little bit disappointing tonight is that we don't have any clouds to light the sky above the basilica. So I'm going to have to rely on the colors of the atmosphere itself to try and enhance this image. So another thing I'm thinking about doing is moving in front of the obelisk and then I will actually do a super panel where I go back and forth across the uh, basilica trying to capture as much of the image as I can when you get up closer it's a little harder to get that picture but again the downside is is I'm going to lose part of the dome all right so let's fast forward just a little bit as you can see it's dark so what I found out from the security guards there is that if you're going to have anything with a microphone on it like I do with this thing you need to have a special permit so I stopped filming and they allowed me to continue to do my photography so in Vatican City, there's only two locations where I um, was able to set up my camera, where I set up my camera because I stayed in those locations for so long. So here they are. I'm not totally sure about the needing a permit to film video here. This policia was going around flexing his muscle to a lot of people this evening, but better to be safe than arrested. I started this photo shoot off to the left of the piazza. This allowed me to photograph St. Peter's Basilica without the Vatican obelisk directly in front of it. During the blue hour, I moved in closer. With the obelisk at my back, I was able to take these dramatic views directly in front of St. Peter's. I used the Vatican colonnades to create a sense of drama and to draw the viewer's eye to the subject, the Basilica. I also set up for one location just outside of Vatican City itself. Take a look at this. This is my favorite image of the night, taken from about 50 yards outside of the border with my zoom lens. This panorama consists of 40 images merged together. The resolution is over 12,900 by 6,100 pixels. I love the dramatic look of the lighting that just accentuates the massive size of the Basilica. I just spent the weekend filming in Rome. Unfortunately, I need to go back to work tomorrow, so I'm heading back to Naples. With the Italian countryside passing by me at 180 miles per hour, it does not take long to get to Naples. Just outside my hotel room is a very interesting part of Napoli, the Portiveri Spagnole, roughly translated the Spanish Quarter. This former location of a Spanish garrison is now home to about 14,000 inhabitants and 16 churches, all within an 800,000 square meter area. I think we'll start with a bit of wine. All right, guys, it's hot. Time to take a break from street photography. Sabatore, you gotta come back here and get on this. Sabatore, ah. Oh. The wine for me. <laughs> there we go, here is Sabatore. Ciao. <laughs> hey guys! Hello. Hi! So hey everybody, Salvatore here. 
Well, I was walking these streets, had a very friendly smile, an invitation to join in here. That's why I'm here today. This is Mark. Michael. 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 My Italian son. Michael. Michael. Michael's helping me with wine to see Michael these. Michael Jordan. Oh, give me a <laughs> Anyhow, guys, I think I may have just found my new favorite part of Napoli, a place that I've Thank never been to. So if you guys go on the patreon.com forward slash EWJ, I'll show you exactly where this place is at. I'm learning some Italian here. So, okay, these are... Taralli. 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 How do you roll your R's? Taralli. Talalli. Talalli. Anyhow, here they are. All right. So what I learned here is winter red. Right? Winter red. Yeah. Summer to white. Very good. You gotta love Italian wine. I will admit, the wine here is very good. Alright. Well guys, I gotta find myself some dinner. Two glasses of wine and no food is not a good combination, but do come and visit my friend Salvatore here. And again, uh, got it on the uh, Patreon channel for you guys on where to find him. And oh, what the heck, I'll just put it on the normal YouTube. So here are the coordinates and also the restaurant or the bar that I'm at right now. This guy is really friendly. And of course we know with COVID it affected everybody. Come and give him some business. Now, for dinner. Well, after two glasses of wine, I'm stumbling around here on these medieval streets of Napoli. I just had a really authentic experience. The, the owner, Salvatore, of that uh, little uh, cocktail bar, really nice guy, really nice guy. So I probably will be coming back there later on this week again. Um, I'm gonna search for some dinner here, and again, on one of these really cool med medieval streets. So these places here are owned by mom and pop. They are not corporations, these are all locally owned. So this is just, this area is a gold mine of really cool experiences to have, so let's go find some dinner. Here there are no shortages of places to eat. Or in America, these cramped streets would be considered a dark alley. Here in Napoli, this is a vibrant place to explore. After a little bit of stumbling around, I decided on Da Pepino for dinner. All right, my first risotto and swordfish. Mm. Yeah, that's good. That's worth the wait. Mm. Well, everybody, that was a good meal, but I can't really recommend the restaurant. Ask for the check. Told they'll be right back. 30 minutes later, I had to ask again, and they told me, oh no, you, you need to pay inside. Let's go enjoy another mom and pop restaurant. Walking among what seems to be the symbols of efficient transportation in the city, we are back for another dining experience. Portions here in Italy are smaller than what you get in America. Don't let the size fool you. The smaller portions mean that you get to sample more. All right, this looks amazing. Mm. Oh yeah, it's good. I clearly enjoyed the meal, right down to the dessert. So this is panna cotta. Plan with caramel tongue. And messy. Mm. And the after dinner cafe. We are out searching for one more meal here in Napoli. With my time here in Italy ticking away, I want to enjoy as much of this experience as possible. Well, today is my birthday and I am in Napoli. And I have to get up at like three in the morning, catch my flight home. So we're all gonna go out and find ourselves a very good meal to have. All right, since it's my birthday, I go, I'm uh, going to have a late lunch so I can get to bed early here. So trying like three courses, a uh, buchetta, a gnocchi, and some meatballs. So we'll see how this one works out. My birthday meal is at the Tattoria Bredo. Of 
course, I have to end my time here with some red wine. The Bruchetta here puts anything in America to shame. In Italy, pumpkin is used not for pies, but for the main courses. Noki zucchini e favola. I'm talking to my mom. Her meatballs are one of my favorites. Fortunately, even after this trip, they still are. Even in these humble streets, presentation is everything. When in Italy, tiramisu is a must. And of course, a shot of the local favorite, limoncello, to finish off the meal. That was awesome. With my early evening birthday dinner complete, it is time to head back to my hotel. This trip was certainly an adventure. Napoli holds a special place in my heart. Here in the south of Italy, my passion for travel was ignited 11 years ago. Naples was the first place I visited outside of North America. I've used the time the Navy has given me here to visit many places, including Pompeii, Sorrento, Pazitano, Amalfi, Capri, Rome, Venice, and Florence. But don't worry, I'll be back. Next time, not as a Navy sailor on a mission, but as a private citizen on vacation. I will finally get to enjoy Italy with my wife and not have to go to work every day. That is an experience that I am very much looking forward to. When one adventure ends, another begins. <laughs>